Water-rich Lesotho has begun Phase 2 of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. This involves the creation of a series of reservoirs which would enable the water to be piped and sold to neighbouring South Africa for much-needed capital infrastructure. Phase 1 of the project, the Katsi Dam, completed in 1996, resulted in affected communities being left worse off after the project with many social impacts that were not dealt with correctly or compensated for. Affected villages of Phase 2 are worried that a similar approach will be taken with them regarding their relocation. My name is Mama Kalang Mutwinya. I'm a resident here at Tuhakabue. I'm a widow to the late Mr. Lesedi Mutwinya, and I am 78 years old. My house is positioned below the dam markings and my daughter's house is next to the dam marking. My name is Tabisa Lengwasa. These herds have been sustaining me since I was a little boy. And now the project has taken away everything from us including the grazing lands, and we are left with nothing. We do not have water as a result of the fencing of our natural springs by the implementing authority. Even though we are being supplied with water, this water is not clean. We are affected by the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. We are therefore going to be relocated and separated from the people that I have been living with, including my children. Mama Kalang not only faces decisions with the relocation of her living relatives, but also needs to make decisions about the graves of those who have passed. Regarding the issue of graves, the LHD will only compensate for one person from the family. The relocation of graves, which involves the exhuming of bodies, is a very scary process, which needs to be handled with all sensitivity. Tradition and culture play an integral role in the lives of the Basutu people. A strong connection exists between the living and the dead. A once untouched civilization is now being forced to break those ties and modernize as their surroundings are developed. The community's means of livelihoods involve animal breeding, crop farming, and amongst other things which form part of their livelihoods include firewood, medicinal plants, and indigenous shrubs. Most of these lands around the dam site have been claimed by the project. As the project grows and develops, so more land is fenced off causing more tensions. Most of the things they are doing them purposely. They know that before you touch my property, you must compensate. They know it, it's written, we have it. But they don't do it. If a household is affected in 2020, as an example, and then we give their compensation, for instance, in 2023, we'll give them compensation for the three years first. The three years that have lapsed, we give them that outstanding compensation. And then for the 47 years that are left, the household will decide, I'm taking all my compensation, or you continue with the annual cash compensation. 
just for now, for example, now, let's say our, our animals are grazing there. They haven't compensated that land. But as I'm talking with you, they just go and collect all those animals and put them to the police there. Our herd was confiscated yesterday by the police. We got them back today. They were confiscated while grazing on their farmlands, which they had free access to, which the project now claims as theirs. As for the livestock being impounded, I am sure that the livestock was impounded from the fenced area. I've had engagements with the police as a project in anticipation of these areas that are going to be restricted. You know, we assisted uh, with the engagement of the communities to improve some rangelands around the project area. And those rangelands are ready for them to take their livestock there, to graze there as an alternative to the already uh, not so good grazing areas that now they are talking about or they are complaining about. Communities living below the dam markings have experienced a sluggish and confusing process when applying for compensation. Farmers especially have been horrified with the rate that has been offered to them for their farmland which equates to four US cents per square meter. We asked the LHDA for clarity on how they formulate this figure. The 68 cents that you're talking about is just part of a formula, a complicated formula that is used to uh, compute the, the compensation. When you look at the, the rates, it's the rates that are based on the market value. And you find that uh, as of now, the square meter for agricultural land is around 20 maluti. But when you look at that formula, you will not see the, the, the figures that I'm taking, totally telling you uh, or you know, giving to, that, to you now. But the, the formula is just a complicated you know, formula that we don't even talk about when we talk to the communities. We give them a very simple way of computing the, the, the compensation. So the 68 that you see in the forms, it's just based on that formula. But there is a simple way whereby you get exactly the same product when you multiply area uh, by the 20 maluti or the 250 maluti that uh, I'm talking about in terms of the, the various um, uh, uh, assets that we're talking about. Yeah. We are not satisfied with water, but they are doing it. Because water, they are going to, it's for, it's for life. Just like a field. Our ancestors, we found our ancestors plowing these fields. Our living depends on the fields, the crops we get from the fields. And then from the, our animals, the cow, the sheep, horses and so on. It's how we earn our living. Now, if such things are not there, are not properly compensated, we are finished. It means we are finished. Where, where shall we get our living? There is no way. If a household is affected in 2020, as an example, and then we give their compensation, for instance, in 2023, we'll give them compensation for the three years first, the three years that have lapsed. Finally, tired of being taken advantage of, communities with the help from CSOs 
are taking a stand against project implementers and getting educated on their rights and be compensated fairly. The challenge that the communities are faced with have resulted in CSOs intervening. The reason the CSOs have intervened is because the government is not playing its role in overseeing the correct compensation procedures for affected communities. Hence why the communities have been attending a workshop which was hosted by Sinudi Legal Center for grassroots human rights defenders to empower and capacitate them in how to engage with project implementers and stakeholders. There's a fine balance that exists in Lesotho between the rural communities and their lands. This balance needs to be protected and with access to the right education and legal services, they will empower themselves to rebuild and restore dignity to their way of life.